Hello, awesome students. Uh, I hope you all are doing well. Um, today I'm going to be talking with you all about um, Chicanx and Latinx um, rock, punk, and metal. And so uh, we're going to dive into those areas today, keeping the scene alive. <laughs> all right. So I'm going to go ahead and start <clears throat> with the presentation. And then while I'm doing this, I'm going to share some video and stuff like that as well. And so sit tight, enjoy yourselves, and get ready for the ride. Orale. So let's talk a little bit about uh, Chicanx and Latinx uh, rock, punk, and metal. Now, one thing about it is that these genres of music end up being um, very, I don't know what other, way, what other words I could say, but very influential in regard to a lot of different social justice issues and things like that uh, within the Latinx and Chicanx communities, but also globally. And so um, that's one thing that's pretty amazing about um, these different uh, genres of music. And although they're, they're, they're similar in some ways and they're influenced by a lot of similar stuff and they're influenced by each other, um, they do end up being a, a genre of music or genres of music um, that uh, add a whole different paradigm, if you will, uh, to, excuse me, uh, <laughs> um, a whole different paradigm, if you will, to the, to, um, the music that we're studying, Chicanx and Latinx music. And so this was a whole different um, thing, which was pretty cool because we didn't get to see a lot of that before. Um, but we all see these influences, and these influences end up remaining a constant in, even in this experience. But let's go back a little bit, and we already kind of talked a little bit about this stuff, but I think it's imp imperative to continue with this conversation about how um, uh, this, these genres of music were, were um, even, how they even began. And first, the beginnings always have to go back to Richie, right? So Richie Valens, not my Richie, you know, and and uh, he, uh, uh, he he ends up being a big influence for rock and roll, just like we we read about in the other articles and and even talked about with with Pro Professor Sanchez. Like Richie, really opened the door for Latinos to like uh, really accept uh, being into rock music and rock and roll, um, and this is something that's really cool because this 18 year old dude makes it happen right and then he's gone way too soon uh which is really sad obviously i mean we all we all um have seen la bamba the movie and you know we've heard our stories about um ricardo valenzuela and his flying guitar but uh one thing that's really interesting about it is like that's what happened like his guitar and work and his songwriting and then uh the use of him himself uh, skyrocketed um, uh, rock music into um, Chicanx and Latinx communities. So people would listen to like other artists, of course, that wasn't a thing, but once they saw someone that was like them doing it, made a world of difference. Just like we see with other genres now and, and, and even in other um, uh, areas where we may see um, actors and people like that, um, that it look like us makes us think and 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 want to be able, be able to achieve that, and so that was very influential. So things really picked up after that, <clears throat> and then after that, other things happen that influence it and and open up the door for individuals um, that were interested in rock music uh, to start making music and start uh, being a part of those that genre. Um, and to a, a, a high extent of being very popular um, and and even being cons being played on pop stations and things like that, just like we saw with Richie, like that was important. And so um, they take his take note of this and then they end up uh, achieving the same thing. And so we have artists uh, from the 60s and 70s who bring that on. And you guys saw that movie, um, uh, Latin Music USA, I think is what it's called. Uh, or that film, and they talked a lot about that and the influence of some of these artists. Well, people like El Chicano and Carlos Santana, that's Carlos Santana playing at Woodstock. That's when he thought, when he was on Mescaline and he thought his guitar was a snake. Um, yeah, like those people end up being 
very influential, not only because of the Chicano movement and stuff like that, but also because of the fact that I'm going to try to move my, my face over here a little bit. Um, also because um, they sounded different. And so, um, yeah, they're rock bands and they're playing this music, but at the same time, they have that Latin tinge to it, right? And it may not even be like, <laughs> like uh, son clave and stuff like that, but the rhythms, what they're speaking about or talking about in the lyrics, um, and even the way um, guitar work is, all this different stuff shows this influence um, regarding their Latin uh, roots. And so we have bands like Redbone, and Redbone's kind of interesting too because it's like indigenous and 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 Chicano and all at the same time, which is like we don't even want to go there because like that's that's like what we are, right? We're indigenous people, and they bring that out too. And like with big hits like that, their song "Come and Get Come and Get Some Come and Get Your Love" is on the Guardians of the Galaxy soundtrack and it blew up, right? Come and get your love. Like that stuff is, 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 is huge. Like part of the populace now, right? And in, in, uh, in um, pop culture, like all over the place now. So not only just like music, but even in film and stuff like that. Um, and then we have the, the, I love that video where they, where they show um, the, the actual video from footage from this picture uh, with uh, little Joey La Familia, and they're like in their like crazy ass garb, their their gear, and then he says like I had boots, I had marijuana leaves on them, like that was real because what was happening is they're doing rock music, but they're using um, uh, they're speaking in Spanish in some of the lyrics, um, the rhythms are part of that. Like you think like Oye Como Va from Santana, and like all those tracks, man, El Chicano, like a bunch of their songs were in Spanish, you know what I mean, and then. Redbone and I mean there's the, the the names could go on and on and on you know what I mean like uh, a question mark um, uh, and, and um, Cannibal and the Headhunters like we, we learned a little bit about them but all those bands end up being very influential for the for the um, the groups after but Richie Valens started it these guys like really took off with it and made it something special and something that was acknowledged and that led to a bunch of different genres of music coming out of it and and genres um that typically latinos uh uh people would think were not a part of it but in reality they were and that's one thing that needs to be addressed here and that's why i'm talking about this today is that um you know like some of these genres of music we don't know we don't realize like how influential uh, Latinos and Chicanos were for this and this is like dear to my heart because this is like some of my music man like um, a lot of the music that we're going to talk about like I grew up listening to Santana and Redbone and Little Joy La Familia, La Chicano, Richie Van I, when I was six I was in the school talent show and I was Richie Valens like I, I have footage of it I need to like convert it digitize it um, but I was Richie Valens at the talent show and I lip synced to La Bamba and it was like, I, I, I was a star for like a week at my school. That's real shit. <laughs> so, um, you know, all those people will influence me. And then later on, like when I was growing up, my sister and my brother were really into different kinds of music and that really influenced me, um, as far as my taste in music were concerned. Um, my sister was really into heavy metal, man. And that's like, one thing that I really took off with in punk rock and and as a little Chicanito when I was a kid and, and running around listening to what my sister was listening to, my brother was listening to, um, it influenced me a lot, you know, like hearing those, the, 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 the music and, and hearing um, the power chords and all that shit, like that, I, that caught me, man. And so as I grew up, <clears throat> those were, those were the music, uh, those were the genres of music that really like I focused on like that it was like punk rock heavy metal some funk of course like the old classic Latino music um, or Chicano music and then hip-hop right and like those were really high, highly influential genres of music in my life and so for this this is like dear to my heart because like this is the music that that I grew up on and that I love still and like I was in bands just like like uh, Professor Sanchez, like I, I might, like I was in a band that we, we were a heavy metal band and we played warp tour for, for th three tours. You know what I mean? Like we did some really cool stuff, but it, I wouldn't have even understood that if I didn't have uh, these people to look up to. 
<clears throat> and so I'm gonna talk a little bit about some of those and I'm gonna like warn y'all like, just like I'm doing here, like I'm showing these artists, but this, this isn't it, there's way more. And so when I talk about the other genres, like I'm not gonna be able to hit on every single Latino and Chicano band that there was because there's no way I could do it because there was a lot of them um, that come out after and after and after. And there's all these different people who are part of, of, of these genres of music that maybe the whole band isn't Latino or Chicano or, and maybe they don't sing in Spanish or maybe they don't use like traditional Latin music instruments um, like congas and stuff like that, but they, but they still um, are part of the community. And that's a big part of it too. They're part of La Raza, right? They're part of our group. And so, yeah, they may be singing in English and stuff like that, but they're still Mexicano or Chicano or Latinx or whatever you want to call it, right? Um, they're still part of that. And that's what's important is that we we hear this music. And yeah, sometimes we do hear the influences of that. And I'll talk a little bit about that in a little bit. But the big part is that like these are people like us making that kind of music. And that's what's really special about it. So even though they don't swing in Spanish, or maybe they don't use like son claves or 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 um, a jarana um, or a vihuela, they don't use that in the music. But the thing is, is that they're brown, they're Chicanos, they're Latinos, um, they're they're like us and like these guys that we're talking about here, and they're still making that music, and it just so happens to be part of the rock genres, right? So let's move on to our first genre. Uh, moving forward from this time period because the 70s and were really influential with this type of music and the 60s were too but it was in the 70s where this really blew up um and uh that's the punk rock scene and so latinos in the scene so a lot of people don't realize how influ uh, how influential latinos were uh and, and chicanos were to the um uh punk music scene and so we had people like Alice Bag right here, this this lady here. Her real name is Alicia Almendares. Um, and what happened is in the 70s and 80s, uh, late 70s and 80s, she was one of the pioneers uh, of, the, of the American iterations of, of hard edge sound um, and punk rock. And so she was um, uh, 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 ended up forming this band with one of the punk pioneers, Patricia uh, Morrison. Um, and they, they made these awesome, this, these they make made this band and started this band and made all these like really influential songs um and most of them were were captured uh via um uh live recordings and so they didn't even like hit the studio so like straight up punk style you know what i mean like no nah, we're not gonna go to the studio just record us live in our live show because that's what mattered right and so just like we saw with a lot of the angst and 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 um even social awareness of the punk uh, scene uh, was brought in even by individuals like at least um, Alice Bag, um, who who fought um, to be a part of this genre, um, and this was huge because we didn't see a lot of, uh, for one thing, we didn't see a lot of women um, in the genre um, until later, um, but then we didn't see anybody that was. Uh, Mexicana or, or, or Chicana or, or Latinx or whatever, you know, that they weren't in there. But then there's Alice Bag and she still makes music um, and she's still all about that whole thing. And that's what's kind of special about it is like we get to see those individuals. Uh, the Zeros, the Zeros were like known as like the Mexican Ramones. Uh, and that's what they were. So although um, they were like a more popular sound of punk rock, uh, they ended up being really well known and um the one thing that was also interesting about it is like some of their melodies and stuff like that were 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 very bolero style you know and so that's one thing that was really cool too is like so even though they were um part of this punk music scene uh they still implemented that whole idea of having the traditional um uh, style of melodies and that's kind of cool too um, and they actually were one of the groups that laid the way for for new wave style um, uh, genre of music or genre of punk and pop punk style. So like Blink 182 and all them folks, they wouldn't even we wouldn't even have them if it wasn't for people like the Zeros. The other one is is uh, Los um, Los Legal Illegals. They're the that's these guys here. They were another genre another group um, from Los Angeles that that also. Um, was influential on the West Coast. 
uh, for punk rock. Um, and that's what's important about them. These are all these Chicano dudes, right? These Mexican-American guys um, who start playing punk music and they have a really uh, rich history. Uh, you're reading about them this week in, in, in the Reyes uh, piece um, uh, about um, uh, punk rock, uh, Chicano punk rock. And so um, they're one of the groups that's highlighted in there and like their story is awesome. Um, and then they also just made some kick-ass music. And then there's the brat. Oh my God! Like I, I was, I whenever I, I remember like when when that uh, hip hop artist the brat came out, I was like, that's not the brat. <laughs> you know what I mean? And like, because I remember hearing this music when I was a kid. And 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 this is Chicano punk rock um, at its finest too. Like you have these people that are from East Los Angeles, the barrios of, of East Los of East Los Angeles. And um, they end up being the pioneers for 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 the punk movement in, in the early 80s. Um, and they um, did a bunch of cool stuff in, in regard to like culture transformations and, and changes in dominant hegemonic ideologies of, of, of what um, punk rock was supposed to look like. And so they went ahead and, and, and turned uh, the table on that. Uh, so people like these groups did that. And I'm leaving out some. So like, like I said, there's no way. If I was going to do that, I'd be talking for a long ass time. And I can't do that. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to play a couple of, of tunes from, from, from these, these people. All right. Um, so let me, let me get to my. Uh... Okay, so let me get to my playlist. All right. Um, and I, it, this is this is some cool stuff. So so hopefully I I posted this playlist on the um on the weekly uh, uh, module so you can um, access it if you want to hear more of these songs. So I'm just gonna play a clip of of, of each of them, right? And so um, All right, so you hear that those power chords, right? The dun 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 that classic punk uh, rhythm, um, awesome stuff. So if you don't know them, like, go check them out because they have some pretty cool stuff. But like I said, like a lot of it's recorded live. The next band I'm going to show you is a sample from the Zeros, um, and so once again, that same like. So once again, that whole. I remember that was like one of the first chord progressions I learned how to play whenever I was playing, learning how to play guitar uh, uh, for that punk style, you know, and that's, that's something that was really cool. And I remember learning that and I was like, yeah, like I thought it was so badass. And, and I mean, like it is right. It was really cool stuff. Uh, the next one I'm going to show you is, is Starry Night from the Brat. Um, cool stuff again. So just listen to them. I mean, that dude even has a rosary in his pocket. Come on, like, <laughs> how much more Chicano can you get than, than being a punk rocker with a, a rosary in your pocket, right? Um, so, yeah, like, once again, like, I remember, hear, I remember hearing these songs when I was a kid and, like, being, like, like just, like, totally into it. And then, like, learning how to play it was just awesome, right? And, and, and the thing that's cool is, like, you got to see people, like, that look like you or your family or whatever – doing this and that was awesome like I, I just remember like my sister's hair looking like 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 uh uh these these ladies that were from there like uh and that was really cool like I remember thinking that was like the coolest shit ever and uh that was what was awesome about um uh uh punk rock and punk rock ends up being like uh the beginning of, of of that part of it right of the of especially like the driving like aggressive uh, part of, of of the music and so um i i just i just love that and there's like a bunch of other um artists like i said i'm not even touching like at the surface of it but there's a lot of them and then later on like there's like a bunch of different punk bands that were that were um a lot of them were latino like you talk about agnostic front their front man's a cuban dude um there's a bunch of them like even like uh it doesn't even have to be punk like artists that were that were inspired by punk like even like think about like sublime and artists like that where they're in, very inspired by punk and, and ska especially from this area so most of them are going to be chicano uh groups and so that was another thing right so we even get like these huge artists that were influenced by these groups <clears throat> which is awesome 
So I'm going to move on to the next genre because I'm trying not to, I'm trying to get to through everything. So punk rock ends up lean, leading um, into the 80s as well. And once they're in the 80s, there's also other genres that end up being a part of it. And that's like Latin metal, right? So Latin metal, the other, one of my other hearts, right? Um, I love metal music. Like I, there's just something special about it to me, just like punk rock, um, the angst and the, and the driving um, uh, beat. Um, and the thing about it is like that driving beat is very indigenous. Um, and that's what's really cool about it too. And I think that's why a lot of like the artists and stuff that, that, that I'm talking about um, today um, and even like from, well, from this genre uh, were, were, it was an easy transition for them um, because of that. So artists like Kraken who were from um, um, Colombia, that's the other thing too, is like a lot of these groups end up coming from like South, uh, Central America, the Caribbean, uh, like that, and and so that's what their were their bases. And the thing that's kind of cool too is they they come from these countries that were were going through different um, political changes and stuff like that. And that was very important because they a lot of these songs and a lot of these artists end up using this as a, as a as a fight against the status quo of of, of the country and regimes that they were uh, uh, living in. And so, and the other thing too is like, this is like the same time as American, uh, American metals coming out too, right? Like, so we have like um, uh, these artists that are like embracing something like uh, American uh, society, right? And so that's another thing that's pretty crazy. But, it, but the most important part is that these guys were, uh, uh, these, these artists were like amazing and they did some really cool stuff. And, and I mean, this is like hearing some of these artists, I'm like, man, that sounds like Dio or whatever, you know what I mean? Like, I remember uh, learning about some of these artists later on, and and um, and I was like, holy crap, like, uh, like this sounds like, like Maiden or, or whatever, you know what I mean? But but they're from Colombia or Bolivia or wherever, you know what I mean? And that was pretty amazing, and some of it was even earlier than, than the artists that I was used to talking about. Um, and they're all influenced by the same people, too. So, like, um, artists like Kraken and... and, and um, and Archangel um, uh, were from Ven Venezuela. And these, these groups, they, they were known for being heavy metal groups, um, but they were also influenced by the, all these different artists. Um, but they also kept some of their um, uh, tradition, traditional uh, sounds and, and, and even, like I said, like drumming and stuff like that um, as part of, uh, of their um, arsenal, if you will, right? And then, uh, 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 Trueno Azul, uh, the the blue lightning, right, um, or blue thunder, right. So they they were like basically like another version of like heavy load or or any of those groups, or even like I said, like uh, Judas Priest or Iron Maiden, where you had like uh, uh, this aggressive, grittier sound, but then you also have like shrieking, like falsetto style vocals, right, where it's like really high pitched vocals. Um, and the production work isn't great. Those guys are from Bolivia. And then also we had like other individuals like Stratus from, 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 um, I think they were from Argentina. So those were some of the, the groups that were, were really popular in, in this scene and they blew up and some of these, some of these artists still play like Archangel is still a group. I, I they're like two different versions of it now. It's kind of like we said with other groups, um, in, in, in the U S too. Uh, but Kraken, uh, they still perform. Um, uh, these dudes are, they're done. They don't play anymore. They only did like a couple years and that was it. And Stratus, I think those guys still jam too. So, um, just a cool uh, thing to see this too. So, so just like we saw with punk rock, now we've seen these metalheads, these hedgers, right? And they're like, yep, uh, we're going to play. So this rise of, of metal in, in South America and Central America, and there's a bunch of other artists and, and the activity that you're going to be working on this week, uh, you'll, you'll be um, uh, uh, looking into some of those artists too that I didn't talk about. And there's a bunch more, like I, like I said, like I didn't, I didn't even scratch the surface. I just kind of picked, um, some of the ones that I knew about <clears throat> and had knowledge of and, and implemented them in here because like it's pretty amazing like how much um, metal bands really came out of this time period and you're talking um, the early 80s all the way into the into the early 90s really um, who were doing this and making this kind of music and um, it was really really cool and, and I and like now I listen to some of these artists and even back then I mean like like just like how badass is that album cover right like this 
archangels with his wings and shit holding up a guitar that has like a spike on the end of it and he's like on some beast right like that's metal as hell and and, and i love that shit that's in the kraken like one of my band's eps was called face the kraken and 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 you know it's just like it's just so metal to be called something like that but their music was awesome so i'm going to share some uh, some of their tunes real quick with y'all too um so let me pull that up um so we can listen to some of those tunes as well so the first one i think we're gonna play oh i forgot to play um Okay, so you see that political tinge to it too. That's also pretty awesome. Because, and then the other thing too is like I forgot to mention about the metal bands. I did talk a little bit about that. Sorry, I'm, I'm sorry I get excited but, and I start talking off fast. Um, but like a big part of it was 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 also bringing up uh, issues of of injustice and stuff like that. And a lot of these bands would write about uh, uh, things like that in their in their songs. But um, one thing that was really cool is that um, they took that uh, genre of music and they and they used it to 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 implement um uh um these discussions right these narratives even if you will so the first time i'm gonna play a stratus um so that's stratus you see that whole like uh metal vibe to it uh the next one is is azul So you see that whole like that whole uh, Judas Priest and stuff like that uh, vibe to it, right? So pretty crazy stuff. Uh, this is Archangel, um, another cool cool example of this. I don't know if it's gonna yeah, it's gonna show me an ad real quick. Need help? Um, but yeah, so you gotta you gotta remember like this was like the cool stuff. Here we go. All right, so there we have another example. Like I said, I have these on there so you can check out more of them. All right, so, um, and I'm gonna come back in a minute to show, share some more music. Sorry to have to jump around back and forth, but it just makes it easier. All right, um, so uh, Latin metal, that was, that was the first uh, introduction of it. We're gonna have a resurgence of it um, in, in, in another, in the future right from what we're talking about so this is the 80s then we're going to get into the 90s and in the 90s we get to see another um introduction into a different um genre of rock music too with uh latin alternative and so that like uh latino alternative right um that is it was was huge right so this is where we get artists that are like um really influential for for what's going to end up being like alternative music and then even before that is going to be like our even our new wave and things like that and so one of the most well-known uh groups is soda stereo and that's uh um these dudes right here right um so totally look at that vibe the late 80s early 90s like that i i remember seeing that hair um and things like that i love the like bolo tie too like that shit's dope and i remember thinking that when i was like man that guy looks badass um, but these, this was an Argentinian uh, group from Buenos Aires and they started in 1982, uh, but they really became popular in the late eighties and early nineties. Um, and they were regarded as the most influential Spanish language band ever, um, and a legend in Latin music. So they were really important. And so they, they kind of twisted that whole genre of, of, um, of, of, music being spoken in spanish and you have to remember this is like the time of like rock the rock and espanol movement so having this um was important because uh uh this was being put out in in, in pop media right so we heard a lot of these artists end up being played this is like um um when mtv and stuff like that was going into latin america um in central america and stuff like that um and being and having their own artists and stuff like that involved in it and this is where it, where it picks up and so um soda stereo was one of those artists that that um really pushed um uh this genre to be put up to the to the limelight and then caifanes uh these dudes here are like the mexican cure right so they were like uh, they're from mexico city they started in 1987 um, and they achieved international fame during that time. And Caifanes' style was described as like a hybrid of like British New Wave and progressive rock. And then also like per, uh, Latin percussion um, and even like um, the delivery of vocals and stuff like that was also um, kind of an interesting thing too. 
um, and in their lyrics and vocal style, like I said. But uh, a big thing was was um, their like their deep like somber tones. Um, so that's why they were like considered like kind of like like we said like the Mexican Cure. Um, and and I know you guys are gonna listen to some more stuff with them in a minute in, uh, in the um, assignment. Um, but Caifanes are awesome, and like their name even comes from like the 1940s Pachuco era. Um, where there was like caffeine was like slang for like uh, like a cool dude and so that's what those they, that's what they went for there and then um, in the bottom here like I said I'm not even going over everybody because there's like there's a grip of uh, Latin alternative artists um, that were really really popular um, in the 90s because that's when it started picking up all over like we even saw like with pockets in 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 in, in metal and stuff like that and even in punk but with Latin alternative, it like blew up. Like there was artists all over the place. Another one is um, Los Prisioneros, the prisoners, right? Um, they were a Chilean group. You're also going to uh, hear a little bit more stuff from them. Um, and they formed in Santiago, Chile, in San Miguel. Um, they started like in 1979, which was a long time before. But then um, uh, they end up being pretty much the, the strongest musical influence that Chile has made in, in Latin uh, American music. So that was kind of cool too with them. Uh, that's those dudes there. So um, let's listen to some of their stuff. Um, I think the first one we have is, let's see. Yeah, Soda Stereo, all right. Uh, and you're going to see that whole like, like late 80s, early 90s uh, vibe to like even their music video. Um, oops. Yeah, here we go. I don't know, but just their outfits are, are like super badass. <laughs> I mean, like just like totally from that time, that hat that he's wearing, that top hat, it's the shit. But anyway, like that was real because like that was like what people were seeing. Like I remember like the first time I saw them um, on TV was um, the spring break, um, MTV spring break, but in uh, – they were in Mexico and they were one of the artists that performed on stage. And I was like, what the hell? And, and I remember like thinking like, holy crap, like those guys are awesome, you know? And, I, and uh, it wasn't particularly my favorite kind of music, but um, I mean, I was like, dang, like these guys must be pretty popular if they're playing on MTV, you know? So that was kind of cool. The next one is Caifanes. Um, I don't know if, if I, I can't remember which song Keith picked or Professor Sanchez pick, but I'm playing this one just because this song, I love it. Uh, me and me and uh, Professor Sanchez jam this song uh, too, so, um, but we play it uh, our style, right? But this is, like, Caifanes is, is the shit. If you haven't heard them, uh, now you know, all right? So freaking good. I love that song, man. I could listen to that song, like, Every day, I, I think I might actually listen to that song every day, um, but just good stuff. Um, and you could see, and it's a, it's another song, so it's like a cover, right? And so um, that's what's kind of cool about it too, is like they went and made it their own, and that's awesome. Uh, the next one is going to be from um, Los Prisioneros, um, and this one is, it's probably their most popular song. Okay, sorry. I'm gonna have. I'm trying to go fast, but that song too. Like it's like one of those ones that's like. At first, I'm like, I don't know, but then you listen to the rest of it. And it's so good. Um, but they, I think this is. These were the dudes that like in Chile. They were like wanted by the government. Was like trying to be killed by the government because of their political influence. Um, because they had this really strong following, and and people um really um uh enjoyed them, right? And so um, uh, they ended up gaining a lot of ground. And so like, they were even like wanted by um, by the government of, of Chile. So pretty crazy stuff. Uh, going back to the presentation real quick. So we're moving uh, from there. And one thing that was kind of cool is like metal and, and punk rock and all that stuff, like um, still were a part of all this, uh, but that an alternative ends up being transformed into all these other um, groups. And so we have uh, people like um, Juanes and people like that that are going to come into the into the scene later. Um, but it was all because these these groups like 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 Caifanes and and Soda Stereo ended up um, 
uh, opening the door for them for for Latin alternative music. And I mean, it's arguable even like with pop stuff, like even like people like even like Shakira, um, in in when her beginning was more like of an alternative artist. And so you you see this stuff um, even being influenced there, and then also influencing other groups later on. Sorry, my my other light went out, so I'm just like with this one like overhead light. It's pretty metal though, so I'm gonna stick with it. Um, but yeah, so that was them. Then what happens is in the 90s, in the later 90s, or even in the mid 90s, I should say, and then even into the 2000s, um, we get um, our, uh, this reinsur resurgence of, of metal, uh, especially with Latin artists, but also coming over more, crossing over into more of the United States. Um, and also like other, it was, it didn't stop other places, it, it, but it came into here and being a part of that, even in the new metal scene. Um, which are some of the uh, the time period like when I was like a teenager and stuff, right? And like Keith was like all over that because he was one of those one of those bands, you know. He was in one of those bands that was very popular, so like Frame, and he'll talk a little bit about that. And we'll talk about that next week when we go over uh, New Mexico's influences and stuff like that. Um, and New Mexico, um, uh, the scene here in New Mexico with 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 these with these these uh, bands and, and these genres. So we had the new metal and metal re resurgence and so angst and resistance, right? So this is where they really were like, now we're going to like talk about shit. We're going to like, we're not going to like do stuff like we saw with, with Los Prisioneros where they were like, they were doing stuff, but they were also um, just making like the, the music, but it was their, their life outside of the, of, of the music that was um getting them in trouble if you will like by the chilean government um but these artists end up like talking about a lot of these issues and the thing about it too is they end up um being influential because we're it's that idea again of seeing people that were like uh them um uh, making music and that influenced them to to continue passing the torch if you will um in the in the hard rock or rock music uh genres and like so like sepultura and corn the Deftones, uh, Rage Against the Machine, uh, El Nino. I mean, there's a bunch of different groups that come out of this time period, this this time. Um, but these are the kind of the ones that I, I talk about because these are the ones that were like influential for me, like Sepultura and, and Soulfly and and um, all these different artists, right? Um, uh, that end up um, uh, uh, being huge. And what they do is some of them bring up like issues. Uh, like you talk about rage, like almost every rage song is about some sort of injustice, right? Um, and then we also have corn. Like I don't know if you guys know this, but um, a lot of people don't know corn. Like Fieldy, the bass player, and uh, David Silvera, the the drummer, uh, were are uh, uh, Mexican Americans or Chicanos, right? And Jonathan Davis too. Jonathan Davis is half uh, Chicano. He's half uh, Mexican American. Um, and um, that was influential to them because they saw these artists. They, these these guys are all like, you think about them and Rage Against the Machine and even like Deftones, like they're just like these dudes that were skateboarders and living in the barrio and like maybe they didn't like fit into certain the certain um, uh, a stereotype of, of kids living there. They were more drawn to the punk rock and drawn to the metal of before and now they they took that torch and continued to to move um uh these genres forward right and to put them out to the masses and like they blew up man like these artists like i mean some like i remember during the time period like corn was huge simple dude i was huge rage against the machine deftones like those artists were massive and then it paved way for for the, for people like el nino and stuff like that for even after um, and that's what was kind of cool about it was that um, it never stopped. Um, it just got um, uh, more popular, if you will. But they started using that platform in a manner that they could um, uh, resist the ideas of capitalism and imperialism and colonialism and all that stuff. And that's what was really cool. And so... Um, you know, being able to 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 see these artists like I went, and I, I I think I saw I didn't see El Nino, but I saw all these other artists. Like my band opened up for Corn and Deftones before, like, um, and meeting these dudes were like they're homies, man. Like, like you go and you meet the dudes from the Deftones and you chill with them, and they're like, they're like your homie that you grew up with, like across the street from your house or that you went to school with and shit. You know what I mean? Or even the dudes from Corn, like David Silviera, the drummer, is like he's a like a like a 
like he would be like my older brother or something you know what i mean it was like weird you know and so like seeing those those people um uh make it and do these things were, was awesome you know and so for me this was like a really cool time period because this is like um really what got me into like playing my kind of music that i liked right and so that was like really dope and and, and you got to see all, all these these artists who were look like me and were like skaters and shit and like they some of them like oh yeah like they listen to hip-hop too and like that was also another thing like that that um combination of those two genres of music um into something like we see with new metal like with corn and deftones and rage um and el nino and even sepultura and Soulfly and people like that where they were like we're going to add a little bit of hip hop to our mix too was also really cool. And we're going to be talking about hip hop, not next week, but the week after um, in Chicano rap. But I mean, even this was, was important because it kind of pushed a lot of that out there too. So that was kind of cool. So let's listen a little bit of this and then we will finish up. So the first one that we're going to listen to is Sepultura. And this is, um, uh uh roots bloody roots i couldn't remember which one i put up but this one was 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 about um some of these things that that were out there look at and then we have the tradition so they're from brazil right so you see that and they're bringing up like some crazy ass issues of like colonialism and the spread of catholicism and christianity to the indigenous peoples of brazil right um crazy shit and like um if you listen to pretty much every simple tuda song has that vibe to it um and they like bring it man like i like sometimes i'm in my car and i'm listening to some simple tuda and i have to like slow my ass down because i'm driving too fast um but just good shit man uh the next one is corn blind um this Right, so you see that that same thing, like that whole uh, mixture of genres there, which is pretty cool. I um, mean, you see like <laughs> like David Silviera and like Fieldy, and even the other dudes are like it looks like a, like cholos, right? Um, like my cousin from from you know you know my mom's side of the family or my dad's side of the family, like um, picking up the bass and playing it. You know what I mean? So that's what's kind of crazy about um, Corn, and they also um, really fought to bring to bring that music out um, in those communities, which is pretty cool. Next is is Rage Against the Machine, and I and I and I'm playing a live version of this song just because like it's just bomb ass song, um, and I love this is one of my favorite songs from from Rage's People of the Sun, and it's about um, the indigenous peoples of Central America and, and and other groups too. But that's like the thing, right? So here we go. I don't know. I just love that song. You could see like the the um, Zapatistas uh, flag outside in the crowd and shit. Like that's just amazing stuff. So Rage is like on a whole other level, man. Like, um, you know, they were very influential in regard to like not only the music but also like politics and stuff like that. And they continue to be that right. And so that's what's amazing about some of these artists. Um, they end up making and fighting to make change and difference and that was one thing that was really cool about um uh, these genres of music is it brought that to light um social injustices um political uh, problems and turmoil economic um uh social i mean all this amazing stuff brought to light because of music and that's like amazing to me like I, there's no other uh way i can imagine it now uh without that and so i leave you with that um hopefully you enjoyed this um uh, presentation uh check out that list um the video play this assignment um because there's more music um enjoy and thank you all for listening bueno bye